the new Gran Turismo 1.40 update is great. If you sign on to 1.40 or the Spec 2 update and try one thing this week, make sure that it's your weekly challenges. This new feature gives you some great rewards, including 100,000 credits for completing one event, an additional 200,000 credits for completing three events, and a five-star roulette ticket for completing all five events. One does require you to purchase the new Porsche 911 GT3 RS, but that's not so bad since it's only 340,000 credits, which you'll earn just by completing the challenges. In addition to that, payouts have also been massively increased with quick races offering a lot more just for playing the game the way you normally would. There's a new money glitch I'll tell you about at the end of the video, but if you're not collector level 50 like me, just earn your money by completing the things you've missed on the events directory. For example, getting all gold on Daytona meant a nice credit payout for my time, and that's on top of all the silver and bronze medal rewards I had earned up to that point. And now my quick races on Daytona offer a whopping 318% payout, meaning 40,000 credits plus a possible clean racing bump for three laps around the track. They've really done a good job adjusting the rewards for just playing the game. More on that easy money glitch later though. Beyond that, you'll want to take a peek at the Sophie 2.0 AI update. Not only is it an easy way to earn some fast credits, but you can try it while driving one of the new cars like my favorite, the Lexus LFA. The Sophie 2.0 AI is a little bit annoying with its emojis that are a bit distracting at first, but how the cars drive is a lot closer to what you'd expect from a real opponent, meaning players can now get a leg up by just playing regular races before hopping into online races. Sophie 2.0 can be activated on several tracks that are easily identified by the heart icon next to the track name. And while you enjoyed this LFA B-roll, I know I mentioned a few of the new cars, but the full list includes the Dodge Charger, the Nismo 400R, Mercedes-Benz 190E, all three of which are found in the Haggerty collection. There's also the Dodge Challenger, SRT Demon, Porsche 911 GT3 RS I mentioned before, Tesla Model 3 Performance, but the real star of the show is the Lexus LFA. All of those are found in their respective location of Brand Central. Of course, I have to mention the new snow level located on Lake Louise, Canada, where you can pop on some snow tires from the extreme tab and go for a spin. A lot of the turns have you using the full slope, so slide around the bend and get across the finish line in style. Most of the cars I've mentioned and that new snow track are featured in the new intro movie, which begins identical to the original that was released when GT7 launched, but we clipped out the end bit on IGN.com if you want to see the new shots of the Nismo, LFA, and other favorites. If you're like me, you really liked the cafe when it launched. I cleared it right away at launch, but now the cafe has a few fun new treats to unlock as you build your collection level. I just hit level 30. I know, I know I need to work on that, but new menu items for the cafe include extra menu number 31. That is according to the website collection road going racers. You need to be collector level 30 and above for that. Then there's extra menu number 32 collection Lexus. That's for collector level 34 and above. And then extra menu number 33, and that is the collection Red Bull X series collector level 49 and above. But in addition to that, there's also new master license events that I'll need to keep working towards once I finish the normal license protocol. The online meeting place has also become the paddock now. That's a fun place to interact with your fellow racers and communicate in between races. And on PlayStation 5, you can now play in four player split screen. I thought I'd show off the three player split screen because I only have three controllers in my house. There's four players though, that's really cool. This is a PlayStation 5 only feature though. And some smaller quality of life changes that deserve a nod include the replay loop if you just wanna have one of your favorite races play forever, and some new race photo options like slower shutter speeds, and of course, Polyphony Digital also added their Tokyo Office to Scapes. By far, my favorite thing is having the dashboard show just how much more I need to get done, and that directory where you can just quickly jump into something you haven't finished yet. I haven't played a ton since completing the original cafe, but I've been addicted the sim racing since Forza Motorsport launched and 1.40 was a great reason to jump back in. There is so much left for me to do in this game and a lot of fun new stuff to dive into for players that feel like they've done everything. Now about that money glitch. 
If you've been waiting, here's how it's done. I saw a lot of people saying you need to be level 50 for the super payouts, but even at level 30, this works for a pretty decent payout of 100,000 credits every seven or eight minutes with a souped up Abarth stock engine that can beat the Tomahawk. This method has been covered by a lot of YouTubers, including Naf, Chunky, Omega, and many others, so I'm not sure where the original credit goes to, but it's kind of all over the place right now. Anyway, to unlock larger payouts, I'd start by getting all gold ratings for the Daytona track. You can also use this as seed money to buy the cars and upgrades you'll need. Next, you'll need to buy or modify an Abarth 595, which you can purchase in the used car shop. That's what we'll be using today. But I also tested this on the Jeep and it worked just fine. Other vehicles I've seen mentioned are the Suzuki Cappuccino, which isn't currently available for purchase, but if you have it, you can do an engine swap and earn credits even faster. Step one, add a wide body conversion to the vehicle and add a wing if you would like better aerodynamics. Step two, buy a fully customizable racing transmission, nitrous soft racing tires, and high RPM turbocharger. You can also buy other racing components if you want to do so, as that will allow you to tune it to be even faster around the track. Step three, you can set your racing transmission to a 250 mile per hour top speed. Step four, be sure to set your tires to racing soft. And step five, be sure to set your nitrous to 100% output adjustment. Next, you'll want the Dodge SRT Tomahawk XBGT. You're gonna make this car very slow. So step one, add a fully customizable racing transmission. Step two, set the top speed to 500. Step three, click into manual adjustment and set the final drive to 5.130. The gear should be around the following speeds, 51, 53, 53, 56, 56, 57, 65. You could also do 43, 43, 43, 44, 50, 54, 56. I don't think the left number needs to match mine or what anybody else says for the big payout. It doesn't seem to have an impact. Anyway, now go to Daytona and set up a custom race with the following parameters. Step one, set laps to as many as you can stand. I usually do five and I clear five laps in about six minutes with the clean race bonus, which is not bad at all. Step two, set starting grid to 20. Step three, set rolling start interval to 50 feet. Step four, set nitrous to 10X. Step five, set weather to dry. Step six, set variable time speed rate to 0X. Step seven, set rival selection to from garage and select your tomahawk that has been nerfed. Step eight, set rivals difficulty to professional. And step nine, be sure you are driving the Abarth and then you can go make some money. I would also save this configuration should you wanna access it quickly in the future. Of course, you can go in and adjust more settings or add more upgrades like racing parts of the Abarth. And if you are level 50, you can do an engine swap to the K20C1 engine and your time spent on track will be even shorter. I'll do a write up about some of the other vehicles and builds you can try over on IGN.com slash wikis if you want to know more. Huge credit to the YouTubers I mentioned up top for sharing this info. All that said, let me know what you think about update 1.40. I am like hooked on sim racing games. I, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just got super into it and I can't stop watching sim racing videos. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you like sim racing or Gran Turismo 7 or 1.40, just let me know about it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And for more on all things gaming, keep it right here at IGN.